How many people were involved when you started your production company? And then now, how many people are involved? When I started, it was me and um, my wife. And uh, now, um, it is me uh, with um, one, two, like four other f folks and a whole bunch of interns um, and, uh, and a, a roster of really great um, creatives and directors. So, so uh, it's become like a little, a little group. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I'm very fortunate of that to, to find um, teammates who, who want to go through, through the um, battlefield of, of uh, being part of a production company. So we started out small, just like anyone, like, you know, I'll be sitting out there going, how do people do it? You know, what do you have to do? Um, so I just started it, didn't worry about the equipment. Um, if there was a bigger job um, to do, we would rent rent it. I, I didn't want to buy a twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of equipment um, and have it sit there for a year or two and let it depreciate and not get its value. So, um, so now you know, um, you know everything's taking a hit now with the, with the pandemic. Um, even you know, we have that. We also have a sales uh, a sales rep that represents um, Go Pop Films and the directors in the uh, Midwest and Southeast. So what they do is they pitch the ad agencies and art directors on our roster of directors and they will send um, if there are um, treatments or spots or things that um, we could bid on. So things like that. We also go to uh, uh, direct to brand or direct to companies, you know, that, that need video content. Um, but at the moment, just uh, things are, obviously production is, is, that, is that a hold and it's picking up, but you, you want to be safe and we, and that's the key, key uh, low overhead, keep your low overhead so you, so you could maintain and sustain. So when, when the economy and when it comes up, you, you'll be able to uh, position yourself. So if we think about it right now, as we are in pre-production, that's how I've, I've, we've talked about it. It's like um, we're in pre-production, so when production comes, we're, we're ready to ready to go. So you know, like um, being able to uh, service service our clients and things like that to our best of our ability. I think that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Pandemic era. Right, and just just with other booms and busts, like let's say the dot com. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when things were really good in the '90s, um, it also can you talk about not getting maybe too confident, knowing that there will be a winter and there's always a winter. You know. Yeah, I think the, the life cycle, the life cycle of uh, of things, and that you just have to kind of be, be steady and 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 know. Especially with with this, you might have a lot of clients, or maybe your business has one big client. But what if they dis What if they disappear? What if your client was a lot of the travel industry right now? Or what if you know? What if your clients were? But then, what if you weren't busy? Then you also you have all. You have a plastic company, and they're needing a lot of things. So it just it just all depends where you're positioned in the market. Um, changes. So you just have to be, um, ex what's the saying? Uh, uh, ex uh, prepare for the, no, expect the worst, prepare for the best, or vice versa. But it's, yeah. it's one of those things where, y you know, you, you, you can't be a fat cat when you, you know, you just kind of like keep going because there will be lean times. And the same thing with films, when films come out, like we just released our film. Uh, we don't know where, what the market, that's the toughest thing about filmmaking because you have a thing that you're made, you started three, two, four, ten years ago, but when it reached market, is it the right time for this film? Does this, does this touch a nerve? Is it, is it two years too early, two years too late? So it's the same time when you release a product. Is it right or not? Maybe it catches on later. What was that with Donnie Darko? It wasn't so so hot here in the states. It goes international. It comes back. It's a five-year 
five-year process. It happens with a lot of different things. So, um, so for anyone who's, you know, have a short film or other films, I think you go back and, and focus on that creating um, because you can't determine the market, but you can prepare for it. I think that's that's the uh, the balance you have to do. You know, have 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 uh, be prepared for lean times, um, and uh, that that'd be the best way to go about it. What area of business does your production company focus on? Well, we have um, a lot of different directors who um, have, whether it's um, healthcare, food, um, fashion, documentary. So, so we 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 cover a lot of different industries. So we 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 could tackle them all. So I figured this out because when I was you know, as me as a director trying to get on into a, a production company, I wasn't going to get hired for a comedy spot, you know, because my reel or my work isn't comedic. I wasn't going to get hired for for um, food because I didn't do any food. You know, I, I had I had a um, kind of documentary uh, feel. Those are the different jobs that I, I would get more cinematic. So I thought. We will have our company instead of um, turning down jobs. Let's find the best directors who does food, who does cars, who does fashion, who does products, who does um, travel, and that's the, your roster. So if you're if you're a client that needs um, cinematic images um, that need to have your brand or message um, elevated and tell a story. Uh, that's what we do. We we want to help you um, uh, tell your story, and that that's our selling point. Like bringing uh, cinematic imagery and and production to to elevate your your brand and your company's message. Um, so it could be wine industry. It could be um, you know uh, fashion. It so we pretty much tackle it. How do you know these directors are a fit for your company? First, uh, so when we we see the the directors um, work, and if, and it, it it has to be a certain um, uh, level and certain sort of um, uh, voice that they're telling. Uh, second, I meet with them, and if they have a similar um, philosophy or personality. Because we don't want to work with jerks, you know. There's already so many walking around. It's it's hard. It's you know we we want we want to work with um, good people who are focused on um, and producing really good work and also um, are nice. And we had this motto, motto of work hard and be nice, you know, uh, uh, of that aspect. So uh, the directors not only have to be uh, talented, they just have to be nice people because. When we are on set and when you're dealing with clients, um, who wants a temperamental director? Or temp it's like we should be fortunate to be working for you. You know, we, we, I want to be surrounded with people with that same attitude of like, how can we help you? It's not like, I mean, businesses, it's like nothing, you can't take anything for granted. Every little, um, every little, job every big job it's a job that should be treated the same um highly valuable you know um just like i remember neiman marcus uh i think uh someone's telling me the sales training or someone's training that you treat everyone who walks through the door the same someone who could look like they're transient versus someone who has a mink coat you never know who's who right so that's the same thing with an email with a call with if your client base, um, we we're just fortunate to be able to see if we can help you. And that's the that's the type of directors. If they have that attitude and they 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 want to um, put their nose to the grind, um, and then they do. And f funny enough, a lot of our directors have a background in photography, so similar to me. So so they they they're actually started out as photographers too. So it's nice to have um, just sort of the. I know visually that they they could capture what they they want. You know, they they could either act as their own 
um, DP or work with DPs or and things like that. So funny enough, um, a lot of our directors are, sh are shooters themselves. Yeah. And what's interesting is too, sometimes, just like you said, the mink coat versus the transient analogy, sometimes in LA, the mink coat, the more show, oh, yeah. the less someone actually, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's the weird part about being here. And maybe this is the same in New York City too, but like a lot of times that's just a front. It's not it's, real. You know? ex exactly. And, 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 and you just, and you know, you, you just never know, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so we, those are the type of directors or, or graphic designers or animators or people we want to work with, even in our crew and, and things like that. Um, I know it starts, they always say it starts from the top and hopefully we could create a culture that, that is professional, but also um, uh, cre creates that um, atmosphere where your voice is heard, no one's, you know, uh, above anyone else, everyone's open to su suggestions, and 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 you know, uh, everyone's artistic. But we don't need to be um, Van Gogh here and be all crazy if, if you you don't get your way. You know. What are your day to day duties with your company? Maybe pre COVID, now during COVID. So, you get up, you know, you fire up that laptop or desktop, and then. Uh, you go through your emails um, a lot right now. Let's let's talk uh, since it's really right now. Co um, COVID is uh, research, a lot of research um, that's going on uh, in terms of uh, uh, new um, uh, clients that we want to kind of work with or a new industry. A we have a. Um, a new industry that we're we're trying to penetrate is the the golf and luxury resort industry. Prior to COVID, uh, we've got a great couple of great directors who who do that. So we're we're trying to match 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 that up. Now that's the commercial side, but for the film, um, the film side uh, is. Uh, we have a couple. Uh, I have a couple different films in in, de in development right now, and one uh, one um, is uh, we're developing the script um, or just shaping it up to be to go out um, for um, attachments and things like that. So the last couple of months, uh, I've been trying to get that script right, and then and then and then also we're also you know producing um, this. Uh, feature film for uh, uh, Yifki. She's a uh, Dutch filmmaker. It will be her first um, uh, feature film. Uh, she, her, her short film, Lily, has been screened over 50 film festivals around the world. It's a Me Too horror film. And, her, and Phosphor is one of her um, first feature films. We're, we're fortunate enough to be producing that. So we're trying to get things lined up for that as well. So like we were talking about before, um, there's still a lot of things that could be done, even though we're not, everyone's getting used to Zoom and all this stuff, but it's, it's laying, laying the seeds and, and, and um, getting that all done. So that takes most of the day. Um, uh, and also preparing for, um, our, we just released the film, like two, two weeks or two, you know, September 25th um, last month. And then, um, so we're, we're still pushing that as well, you know. Um, so lot, lots of little different things on, on our plate. And so maybe pre-COVID, was it responding? And, 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 and post-COVID or during COVID is now hunting, yeah. doing research? Yeah, hunting, doing research. Um, and, and because, you, because you don't know who's going to be um, left standing, <laughs> it's a weird thing, you know. Even while we were talking with our um, sales agent, who who we've released our film for North America, but we're still um, you know entertaining international territories like Germany, UK, Ireland, and all these other parts. But but because of uh, the pandemic and things, different companies have gone under. Who's staying? So it's almost like everyone's waiting to see um, what's what's left. Who's standing? Where's the you know. Um, so there, you know, everyone's adjusting, and, it's, it, and so you kind of have to take a um, optimistic um, point and um, 
and and do your research and and tread water um, until there's a break, you know. <laughs> yeah, so it's very interesting. Well, I mean, for commercial commercial work, we used to, um, you know, we, we had a lot of shoots pos postponed, um, you know, cancel and things like that. So, uh, um, you know, you you do you deal with the blows and, and you know you. You take it, take it with a chin, but you, you, you guys still stand up and prepare as as when things open up. <laughs>